Hello guys, welcome to AI Sciences. My name is Shazeb and today we are going to discuss about rainfall prediction with the help of stagged LSTM models. So let's get it started. The first thing is to import a few libraries that we are going to use. The first library is NumPy. So write import NumPy as NP. After that, we need to have a few cross models. So let's write from cross.models import sequential after that import a few layers so they are available in keras dot layers so let's import layers such as lstm dense and dropout right so after that the next step is to import pandas as, as np because uh, as, as pd sorry because we are going to use that other than that we are going to use matplotlib from matplotlib import pyplot as pld and at the end we are going to use a scaling mechanism so let's write from sklearn dot preprocessing import standard scalar and at the end let's import seaborn as sns okay so let's do the importing first after this the next step is to input our csv file into the data frame for that we will write df is equal to pd dot read underscore csv and here the name of the data set that i am using is rain fall data dot csv i have already saved that into my folder now let me show you the data set so this is the data set it has one two three four columns and one column is for date so the next step here is to plot this data frame to see how this is looking so let's write df dot plot and let's write the kind of plot as line other than that let's give it a fixed size of 14 cross 8 So let's give it a title. Let's say the title is rainfall. After that, let's give it a Y label. And the Y label is values. And at the end, let's give it an X label. And let's say it as a parameters. So let's write parameters here. Now this is the plot. As you can see, this is the precipitation. And here we have wind speed, temperature, and relative humidity as well. So all of these things are plotted now. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to convert the dates and save them into train dates. So let's write train underscore dates is equal to pd dot to date time that is the function we are going to use to date time and we are going to enter the data frame into it and the column that we are going to use is date let's run this and let me show you the train dates now so these are the dates from 1990 to 2021 and after this we need to tell it which are the columns that we need so the columns that we need is from first to fourth right after the dates so for that i'll write one to five and then let's print columns so there we go these are the four columns that we have printed 
and we can also know now the column that we need from this is precipitation which is the rainfall prediction column so for that we'll write one column two and this is the column that we need it and now we have that now after that what we need to do is we will make a training data frame which is equal to data frame columns dot as type and what is the type that we want we want it to be float after that we can also show its plot by writing plot df is equal to training df training underscore df and after this i can just plot it by writing plot underscore df right and dot plot dot line so it will show me the line plot so there we go this is the perception and this is its plotting and now that it is saved in training data frame let's start with the scaling so to perform the scaling we need to write from sklearn dot preprocessing import standard scalar after this let's take a scalar let's take a scalar and it should be equal to standard scalar right and after this the next step is to perform this fitting on training underscore df and at the end we are going to have training underscore df underscore scaled and we are going to perform the scalar transform and in this we are going to use the training underscore df so let's do that and now that we are done with scaling the next step is to have a train x and train y values for that i have also re uh, written a code so now let's run this code as well so there we go this is the train x and train y shape as you can see now after this the next step is computation of model so the model is equal to sequential right so for using the stacked lstm we will first enter an lstm model for that let's say model dot add and then in lstm we are going to give it the neurons neurons are 32 we are going to give it an activation function so activation is relu and after this we are going to give it an input shape input underscore shape and let's give the shape as train x dot shape one comma train x dot shape two and out of this we are going to write return underscore sequences is equal to true so this is how you can add any lstm layer right so after this if we want more layers let's add three layers so in this return sequences will be true also but the input shape will be out uh, coming from the previous layer so we do not want input shape here let's delete this and we do not want input shape here let's delete that as well and here because it is the last layer we do not want a return sequence so let's write false after this we need to add a dense layer for output so for that let's write model.add and here i will write dense 
and what is the shape that i am going to use here i am going to use the train y shape so let's write train y dot shape right so this is it and after that we need to do the compilation so for that let's write model dot compile and let's give it an optimizer which is adam optimizer that we are going to use and let's give it a loss which is msc and at the end we are going to write model dot summary now the last thing that we need here is we should add a few dropout layers as well so let's write model dot add uh, so that it drops a few neurons if it's not working fine right so let's write 0 0.3 here and let's copy this and let's paste it here and let's paste it here so dropout will be after each layer so let's run this okay so we have an lstm then a dropout layer then another lstm then a dropout layer then another lstm then dropout layer and then a dense layer so this is our model after developing the model we just need to fit it so let's write history is equal to model dot fit right and here we are going to write train x comma train y and let's do it for 30 box and let's give a batch size of 5 and let's give a validation underscore split of 0 0.2 and the end to see everything let's write verbose is equal to 1 okay now that the training has been started let us move on and plot this so to plot it we need to write plt dot plot and here we will plot two things first thing is the validation loss and second thing is the training loss so for the training loss we just have to plot loss and here we will give it a label so label is equal to training loss and in the same way we will also do the validation loss as well so validation loss and label is equal to validation loss and at the end we are going to run plt dot legend so let's see our losses so there we go this is our training loss this is our validation loss as you can see training loss is more than validation loss so it is not overfitting now we can perform the forecasting i have already saved that part of the code so i'll run it and we'll see what happens okay now that this is done let's do this part and there we go this is the result that is being shown to us with the help of stacked lstm this was our rain prediction before and this is the rain prediction that has been done for the next days so in the same way you can change the lstms to buy lstm as well or a single lstm and these results will be changed accordingly so this is it for today this is how we can implement lstms and and stacked lstms to perform a prediction Thank <music> you.